Crap, so are you gonna name your kid um Kyle? Um no, I don't think so. <laughs> no. His name's gonna be Theo. Theo. Uh, oh, you've already decided. His his name. His name. His, his name. Boy. You already know? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, she's been pregnant for six months already. What? Yes. Where the fuck have I been? Uh you've been a uh, party on Lebanon. Oh my god, dude. Yeah. Holy shit. Congratulations. That's fucking insane. Thank you, thank you. Thank wow, you. dude. Hell yeah. Wow. Let's raise a glass to a new father. And the new world renowned. Coming. And the new boy. A uh, future. I hope not, but thank future God. bartender. Thank God it was a boy. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get yeah, really yeah, red yeah. pill actually, on this. Actually, I feel very lucky about that. <laughs> to be really honest, I thought I was going to have a girl. To be I, I could I could totally see you with a girl. I knew it. Like I, I don't know something, something told me like it's gonna be a girl. Mm-hmm. And then I, when we found out it was a boy, I was like, wow, I'm blessed. I mean, wow. I was gonna be blessed, uh, like no matter what, right? Like, of course, of course. But uh, but yeah, like the fact of having a little boy coming. Wow. Well, it's uh, I can't even describe <laughs> the way I'm feeling. <laughs> it's actually oh, pretty good. Dude. That's crazy. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Damn, brother. So when's she do? Uh, first week of April or last one of March. Wow. We don't know that yet. Precisely. Wow. Well, this is going to be a very interesting time in your life, and holy crap, I'm glad to get you now because I'll never see you again. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, farewell, and... Uh, or probably you'll see me more often. One of those two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, dude, so, wow, that's a, shit, man, that is fucking amazing. I'm glad that you just told me that. I'm glad we got that on fucking recording, too. That's amazing. <laughs> um, what are you going to do when that baby comes, man? You're going to continue to work? Like, what's the, what's work life going to look like since we're bringing you on the show as a bartender? What's that, uh, what do you, what do you kind of see for yourself? What do you feel like? life might be like once you know once you get that in your hands well um i haven't really thought about it uh obviously i have an idea that what can actually happen so what cannot but uh mm. you know like I, i'm not the kind of guy who makes plans as you can see <laughs> <laughs> so I, I take it as it comes uh, i'm very good at, at mm. adjust yeah so like i don't i don't I don't have a plan, a specific plan, if that's why you're asking. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm sure I, I'll get shit done. Like, it just will be, my life will be different, that's for sure. Yeah. But uh, it doesn't mean that I can adjust to it. Yeah, of so, course, of course. I can't, no. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, okay, oh, 100%. <laughs> I, I think you're going to be a great father. I think so, too. You're going to be yeah. a great baby daddy. <laughs> I am, yeah. Yeah. I have faith on myself. Yeah. I, um, yeah, like, uh, I mean, I'm 32 years old. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I don't know. I recently, if you if you were with me probably when I was 28, I would be like, no, like, kids, like, you're crazy. No, why would I want to have a kid? Mm-hmm. You know, especially working in this industry. Yeah. But, um, but I don't know. Uh, once I turned 30, like, everything started, like, just being different. Mm-hmm. You see things different, different perspective, different. It's a different stage of life. Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, I don't know. Once I turned thirty-one, uh, I was, I was already like, yeah, I want to have family. Like, yeah. I want to, I want to have a little, little, little me, little version of me. <laughs> yeah. And um, and here we are. Like, yeah. Sarah and I, we talk about it, and she was also like. Oh, she wanted, wow. She wanted to have a baby too, so we were like, okay, let's. Oh, do Oh wow! So this was planned. Yeah, we talk about it. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. talk about it. You're like, it. if it happens, it happens. Like, yes. it's, it's like, yes. it's cool. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, man. Cool. The way you threw that on me, and you know, just knowing you, not 
was like, this is not planned. No, I'm t- <laughs> <laughs> the guy who doesn't like to pl- have plans have has a, plan a fucking planned child. Have a master plan. <laughs> Oh, come on, I got talent, you know? It's, it's not all about a face. It's also about uh, the show that we put on. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just recalling everything that everyone else says to me. Um, <laughs> but, but I got to be honest. You, you, you're a pretty, pretty boy. Yeah. I like to I thought you was going the opposite like, way. I thought you were going to say you got talent. You just said exactly <laughs> what everybody says. <laughs> but you're a pretty boy. Like, what, what, do, what do you want oh, from us? Amazing. You're a fucking good-looking guy. <laughs> I like to see you behind the cameras. I have to say, when I saw this commercial you made, the last one. Oh yeah, that... I was so happy. I was like, "Yo, Kyle was born to do this." <laughs> yeah, like, absolutely. You're like, I love to see you behind the cameras. You, yeah, that's yeah. your thing. That's y- your thing. Yeah, you're talking about the Zaxby's one with me on the me on the uh, the buffalo wing. The buffalo wing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. so fucking hilarious. I love it. Yeah, if anybody listening doesn't know, you can look up Zaxby's <laughs> guy on a buffalo wing. Mm-hmm. Um commercial on youtube and you'll find that it was a super bowl ad and shit like that which is really crazy because i told you the story about that right um which one that how like it that whole thing came super full circle from like since i was in college oh no no did i, I ever tell you, you about that, that. oh no. my god it's crazy so the guy on a buffalo wing concept is taken from a um a, an old youtube clip that went really viral back in 2000 like nine or ten and um it's it. What it was is this band called Jomo and the Possum Posse. Actually, that record right up there behind my mezcal. Oh wow! Um, those guys made this like funny song. To <laughs> it's called Guy on a Buffalo. That's the name of the song because there's this <laughs> fucking movie called Buffalo Rider oh, that wow. came okay. out in like the early seventies, and the main actor is who you see at the end of the commercial that I shot. He's the actual guy that was riding the buffalo. In the original movie, Buffalo Rider. So what Zaxby's did is that they saw the com- they saw that video and video. thought it was a hilarious idea for a chicken wing. <laughs> but this was like viral when I was in college, and yeah. like my friends were obsessed with it, and we were all obsessed with it because there's like two or three of them that they made. They're fucking hilarious. And the wild story about this guy Rick is that he used to train real animals. In like four Hollywood movies back in the fucking 60s and 70s. So he trained, he was actually like a production came to the ranch that he was on, like in Utah or something like that. And saw him like, like a, like a writer on the production saw him riding a Buffalo and was like, holy shit, that's going to be a fucking box office movie. (laughs) And it's like one of the most racist, like terrible fucking movies that like, he's like killing Indians and shit. And you're like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't actually, he doesn't, he doesn't kill any Indians, but, um, it's just, it's a, it's a whole full circle thing. So I was very blessed to, very blessed to have that, but, but yeah, yeah. Uh, you were a good looking, uh, Buffalo wing rider. Buffalo wing rider. Cowboy. 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 Thank you. Thank you for that, man. You're always fucking, you're you're always like a great supporter of mine, which is fucking amazing. (laughs) No, you seriously are. Like, I love you for that. Like, it's not. Same, same, same. uh, The love is, you know, uh, back and forth. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't don't know. I I, I, Listen, like, once you work in this industry, you get to know a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. You get to, like, deal with people. You get to negotiate with people. You, you. You just met a shit ton of people. Uh, like, here and there, there's a couple people that they, you actually make connection with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. like, having you working behind the bar or having you as a customer is always, like, it's always good to see you. You know? Mm-hmm. Like, like, you got the energy. You got, like, uh, you, you always just, like, smiling face, you know? Like, even though when you're having a bad time, you don't show it to, to the world. Mm, yeah, so yeah. that's that's something that, you know, like... Uh, I would say attract people or like in somehow like uh, we never had like any issue. Like I, I don't yeah. think we ever had an issue. No, if anything, no. we always had a blast working yeah, no. together. Yeah, always. <laughs> <laughs> and, always. Um, yeah, like your personality and probably my personality are like, like pretty similar. Yeah. The reason why like we always, we always work well together. Yeah. We take care of each other every time we see. And for that. Hey. Thanks. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, I do think we are like fairly like we are pretty similar, and um, it's wild like how I even met you. Like you were working down in the Lower East Side. What was the name of that bar? Uh, Botanic Lab. Botanic Lab, Botanic right? Botanic Lab. It's and where everything started. Yeah. Oh, that's where everything started for you. Yeah. That's where you first started bartending. Uh, no, I was a bar biking. 
You're a bar back in there. I didn't know shit about the industry back then. I'm talking about like 10 years ago. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I didn't know like how, how to make a drink or even even the name of liquors or spirits. So, so yeah, I started working with this guy, which is, uh, I consider him my mentor. Because uh, I, when I, when I start working with him, uh, I was working previously. I was working in this Asian kitchen, where I find like so many new flavors, so many uh, new herbs that I didn't know even exist. Yeah, that's racist. And, and, and when I, tr- <laughs> <laughs> and, and once I tried them, I was like, "Fuck!" Like I fucking love this. So I start working with them. I I had so many ideas. I was working on my own recipes, mm. own food. This is on food. And once I start working at the bar, making infusions, because these guys, they were making infusions only. Mm. So uh, I was like, wow, like I can bring everything I know from the kitchen to the bar into a cocktail. Mm. So I have so many ideas. I, I show up and I, once I learn how to, how to do like basic infusions, mm-hmm. then I'm like, okay, I, I feel like I can do my own shit. So I started like bringing so many ideas and... Uh, my mentor, his name is Miguel, Miguel Aranda. He was like, yeah, you have so many ideas. Bring it, like do whatever you feel like you want to do it. And then we work on it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, little by little, I start learning how to deal with people, how to make a cocktail, how to learn recipes and mm-hmm. shit like that. And eventually, like I start crushing it. Like I yeah. was a uh, bar back for like six months, probably <laughs> like five yeah, it didn't take me long to become a bartender. Yeah, and um, and this this is at the this is not at the Korean place. Is that the or sorry the Asian place. place, which is a Vietnamese place. Vietnamese, okay. Yes. It's at you're talking. You were back, bar backing for six months at that joint where I met you. Or are oh, you talking? No. Are you talking we, about I'm the Asian talking place? Way back. Okay, okay. You're talking even further back. Way so so back so you so you started bar backing at the Asian place and then you got bumped up to a bartending. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but it wasn't an Asian place. I was working in the kitchen in an Asian place. You follow me? Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. So this is where I learned like all the all the recipe for food. Aha. Uh-huh. Yes. So then uh, this place I'm talking about, uh, Botanic Lab, oh, it was right. it was across the street from this Asian place. Yeah. Across the street. Yeah. This is on Orchard Street. Right. So I go there and then I start learning like super quick, like. I don't know. I, uh, it was my life being at that bar. Like mm-hmm. I, I was spending yeah. 12, 13 hours and I was happy about it. Even though I was making shit money, I was making like, I could just pay for my rent and that's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like I wasn't making that much, but I had love for, for the industry like right away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why do you think you like, uh, really liked working with, you know, all kinds of different flavors and, you know, different consistencies in your cocktails. Cause you know, uh, you know, I've had other people on here who are like mixologists and I consider you a mixologist. Like you are like, you can build a whole fucking cocktail program. Like, you know, your shit, you know, the good ratios for cocktails, you know, all kinds, you know, way to infuse things and way to, you know, make all these other kind of like chemical reaction type shit. So like what, like, is it about that that you you love? You just love like exploring that. You love the like the flavor. You know, uh, at the beginning, it was more just about um, creating my own my own recipes, my own infusions, my own. Uh, I my goal back then was uh, making a cocktail that no one else could make. Mm-hmm. You know, like I wanted to be, I wanted to create unique stuff and uh, simple but unique. Mm-hmm. So by infusing, uh, I don't know, gin and. Dragon fruit. Mm. Like, what? Mm. But, um, you know, like, I was making something unique, simple, and easy to make in somehow. Mm-hmm. But uh, and then, uh, little by little, I learned that uh, if you make it so unique, it means no many people can make your cocktail. So it's uh, like... A, or drink it. Or drink it. So it's uh, like a downside. So I think all the love start like, coming... As it goes, you know, like, uh, I got involved so much into this bar industry as I was walking the path. Yeah. So, uh, it got me like really, how to say, like, I was very, very interest, 
interested in the industry because I was putting my ideas in, into drinks, you know? Yeah. Like, like let's say a photographer wanna wanna show you when when they take pictures, they wanna show you their perspective. They wanna yeah. show you what they see. <laughs> yeah. To me, it was like I wanted to show people like what do I feel like like into a drink? Like put it in your mouth literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yep. And you're gonna like it. You're gonna love it. Are you gonna come back for more? <laughs> <laughs> and on top of that, you're gonna pay me. <laughs> <laughs> so how can you not fall in love with this industry? <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, it's a double win for sure. It's a triple win. <laughs> a triple win. Yeah, it's definitely like I mean, it's you know, it's the same way as any person who loves to cook, like loves to cook and have people taste their food and stuff yeah. like that. But I think, you know, uh, building cocktails is just, a, is just a little bit different because it also has, you know, that aspect of, you know, service and, um, you know, everything that comes behind, you know, with come working behind a bar. And I think you're also really interested in like the money making aspect and, you know, you're able to, I think that's really something interesting about you too. I think you've, um, like worked enough and you understand how to make money and you care about making, you know, money for the places that you work at, which is really good because not a lot of bartenders do that. Oh yeah. I mean, they're like, fuck that. It's all about me and how many Mm -hmm. fucking tips I'm going to make. Of course you're both like you like want to make, have a successful place of work and then also make your money, you know? Yeah. That's uh. As I said, it's something that uh, it comes at you with the time. Because as you said, yeah, at the very beginning, it was just like me, me, me. And I want to make my money and I want to pay for my rent and buy me nice clothes. You know? <laughs> yeah. But then um, then you learn. Like as, as you go, you learn. Uh, I've been in places where they have to shut down because the business wasn't good enough. Mm-hmm. And no wonder why <laughs> back then. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, you find the balance in between, you know. You find the balance in order for them to make their money. And also to make your own money, like you have to, you have to see both aspects. You know, it can be you, 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 and then you all the time. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah. I mean, I actually never thought about this, but uh, now that you mention it, I think yeah, you, you're you're right. Yeah. Because I've been working with people that they just don't give a shit. Like mm-hmm. they don't give a shit if they uh they give away I don't know a couple of drinks, a couple of cocktails, blah 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 blah. They they just want to do their, at the end, they just want to do their tips, mm-hmm. walk away with their money, and that's it. Yeah. So that's not fair for, like, the industry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I fucking respect the hell out of you for that because you, I mean, you are a serious bartender and mixologist who really does this shit. Like, you know, I mean, I don't really know what other kind of work you do. I, I don't, you know what I mean? But, like, outside of, you know, bartending and, like, creating, you know, uh, cocktail programs and stuff like that. But, um you know, you are one of not many people that I know that I've bartended with that really fucking care about that shit. And like, this is your career. Mm-hmm. Like at this point, and if, if, if I'm wrong, correct me, like, please, like if I'm saying anything that's not true, like, I mean, I, this is just like what I'm, what I've seen from you, yeah. what I know of you, you know what I mean? Yeah. So if it's not really that, but you know, let me know. But, um, like that's, that's, res- and that's why I fuck with you so hard because <laughs> like, because you know, like, you know me, like I'm, I love being, you know, I love bartending, bartending. I love being in the space. Um, but you know that like, for me, it's just kind of like a part-time thing and I just happen to be good at it and I happen to love it. Mm-hmm. But you know that I'm not going to be like making a fucking cocktail program. You know yeah, what I mean? I'm, I I'm not going to be doing like a whole lot of shit, but also I also respect the place though. Yeah, And I do, take my, do. and I still take my job seriously. And, uh, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, to be fair enough. Yeah. Uh, it's not because like you're my body or my friend, but, um, yeah. um, uh, this is something that also like, uh, make me, uh, even come closer at you because you were curious about it. You know, remember that recipe I gave you with a uh, mezcal and uh, coffee to make the, yeah. Oh. Hey. And hey, it, you hey, made it hey, once, hey. I made it twice, and you made it to the point that you actually made it perfect. <laughs> yeah. You, like, <laughs> yeah. And this is like, it tells you a lot of people, like, especially bartenders, you know, because it's not like you only want to make it and that's it. No, you, you want to make it better. You want to keep trying and make it and make it and make it again until you actually got it done. Yeah, and yeah. you did. 
And you fucking surprised me for that. I'm like, yeah, I fuck with you. Yeah, big time. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Like, I, 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 that's what I like from you, too. You know, uh, like, yeah, you do your job. You, you do what you're supposed to do. And on top of that, you're curious about it. You know, like, yeah. you want to keep learning. You want to keep uh, doing it. And you want to just, you, you don't want to just do it. You want to do it better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, I'll, I'll give you credit for that. Oh, yeah. Thank you, man. Big Thank time. you for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy, like, the journey from, you know, starting out at, like, I mean, obviously, I started serving, or I started as a busser, like, way back when, when I was, like, 16, and then, obviously, moving up to a server, and then bar backing, and then, you know, bartending, but, like, in a fucking Irish pub, and then you move out to New York, and it's, like, for anybody listening, when you move out to New York, if you don't have, like, good like a good resume it can be hard to get oh, a yeah. fucking bartending job here unless yeah. and you're probably gonna have to start out at like a yeah. shitty tavern or something like that oh, like definitely. unless you have like legit cocktail experience which like across the united states if you're not in like la chicago miami austin like probably like denver seattle mm. maybe like if you're not from yeah. like a kind of like a mid-major like bigger city that like cares about cocktails yeah like you, you're absolutely right. It's absolutely right. You need, in order to be a bartender in New York City, you need, uh, you need two things. You either have a great resume, you come in for a big city, or you just know people. Yeah, 100%. if you know the right people, you're into the business. And uh, I'll, I'm gonna get back to my situation. Uh, when I start with this guy Miguel Aranda, I was so blessed that he was there at that moment. He invited me to work with him. He's, uh, he's huge in the industry. Uh, he's one of the guys who opened uh, Apotec in Chinatown. When yeah. Apotec was fire, Apotec was fire. We're talking about like 10 years ago mm -hmm. at least. And uh, him and Albert Trommer, they, they open Apotec. They start working together. They create a great, great crew. Um, I had the opportunity because of him, I had the opportunity to meet Albert. I had the opportunity to meet um, Esteban, Esteban Ordonez. He, okay. he, uh, he runs um, Great John's. Okay. The yeah. Whiskey yeah. Distillery. Great John's Distillery, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Um, Miguel Aranda, he, 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 I think he has a couple of spots in the city now. And uh, Albert Trommer, who has a DOM lounge, like uh, around oh, yeah, the right, corner, right, around, around the corner, corner yeah. from Chap Bar. And um, so it was a great crew back then. Mm. And to me, the simple fact to get to work with Miguel, it, it brought me up to to do better. Uh, I was uh, he got me into competitions. He got me into um, he sent me to do uh, cocktails, uh, menus. Uh, he was always pushing me to do more because he saw the potential. Like I was, I was hungry mm. for knowledge. Yeah, and he saw that. Um. Well, um, w working with him, starting as a bar back, uh, I got to learn a lot. Not that he took my hand and told me, like, oh, this is how you have to do. Did you? No, it's all the opposite, actually. Um, so I was, I was so naive. I didn't know. When I'm telling you, I didn't know anything about cocktails. Like, I, I was zero. To the point when I told him, like, how do you make an old-fashioned and he sees me, mm -hmm. he laughs at, laugh at me, and he walk away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, what did I do? <laughs> yeah. So at the end of the night, he goes and he's like, okay, uh, you, you, I'm going to give you homework. You're going to go to Google, use your fucking computer, mm -hmm. and, and Google uh, classics, a uh, recipe for, for classic uh, New York cocktails. Mm -hmm. Learn all the fucking recipes. And if you really want to... If you're really interested on this, you're going to learn by yourself, get the knowledge first. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you start practicing as much as you can. Right. I'm like, okay, fair enough. I did my, my own research. I started getting into it like big time. I'm, I'm a little bit of, uh, I'm a little bit of a nerd. <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> So, yeah, that was like as soon as I was uh, getting back home, I was just like doing my flashcards, <laughs> learning <laughs> as much as I can. And on top of that, I had my own ideas. Like one, once I knew how the, the tequila is made, 
I was like, okay, so if it's made by this agave plant, maybe if I use this, um, this elixir, they will match together and make a great cocktail. Okay, now that I know whiskey, uh, it's made it like this, I, I can use something to smoke the cocktail and get the flavors. So I, it, was, it was a beautiful thing. Like the way that I was told to make cocktails, it was probably the best way ever. Like now I, I, I working with kids that they're like, how do you make a mojito? And I do exactly the same thing my mentor did to me <laughs> yeah pull off your phone <laughs> study <laughs> yeah. the classic the classic recipes and if you actually into it you learn yeah 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 um so yeah like i was so blessed to to meet all these people mm -hmm. uh, they always push me to do better things and by the time you you know me at this joint on avenue c remember mm -hmm. it was called the third man uh that was my little baby <laughs> that was a little baby. I was, yeah. uh, I did the whole co cocktail program. Uh, back then I was coming from win the competition for uh, Apion Tequila. Um, I won a couple competitions. I was making so much noise in that year. Like they, people like were looking for me to create menus, doing uh, consultings. And at the end I ended up uh, in Avenue C and Southern. It's wow, where, that's crazy. It's, um, yeah, it was the little baby. Uh, I, I love the bar. Um, but yeah, I was probably too young back then. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I think I did a great things, <laughs> amazing things. Yeah. But on the other hand, I was too young and too wild. <laughs> <laughs> so it, yeah. was, um, yeah. it, was, uh, it was a nice experience. Yeah. Uh, you get to learn more from your mistakes, actually. Yeah, for and, sure. Um, 100%. So I did. Mm -hmm. And as you can see now, like, I'm still, like, into, you know, like, having fun behind the bar, doing my own things, blah, 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 blah. But I'm I'm not as crazy. I'm not as wild as I used to be when yeah. I was 27, 28. Yeah. yeah, 100%. 100%. I know that feeling. <laughs> I, think, I think a lot of bartenders <laughs> go through that phase where they're like, well... <laughs> Yeah. You look back on it and you're like, God damn, I was doing some crazy <laughs> shit. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you got to have that fucking base knowledge of, of any classic cocktail. And then from there, you can just keep building and building and building. So, like, what um, – you said you got this competition. So, I've never competed in any, um, in any bartending thing. Um, but what was that that you won? You said it was for Avio and Tequila. Mm-hmm. Um, um. And what was like, can you tell us a little about that for anybody? Cause I, that doesn't know anything about bartending competitions. Cause I, I barely know anything about bartending competitions. Oh, well, um, as I said, like in, in this industry, you get to work with a lot of people. They interested in what you do. Uh, and this guy just saw me bartending and he was like, Hey, I'm a brand ambassador for, uh, Abion Tequila. Uh, eventually we became friends. We made some business and, once he threw the competition, um, he was like, I want you to be in it. I was like, okay, so what's the competition about? Like, to just create a cocktail with the tequila and present for a couple people, present it to the judges, and um, they'll decide if, uh, if the cocktail is good or not. So I have no problem like making, <laughs> working with tequila, making a cocktail. Like I had zero problem with it. Um, to be honest, I don't even remember what cocktail I made for them. But uh, I just presented to the judges. I was competing with another two people. And uh, it, was, it was just easy. Yeah, was that here in New York? Yeah. Okay, It was cool. on top of the hotel of, to be honest, oh, the Royal, Ro Royal Crown in Chinatown. Okay, cool. It was in a rooftop. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really know it, but um, have you Royal been in any Crown. other competitions other than that? Um, mm, yes. Um, one in Tribeca a while ago, I was, it, it wasn't as big as that one, but, um, yeah, I made a gin cocktail, made it with a uh, lemongrass and juice. And, uh, that one also was super easy, like mm -hmm. nothing really crazy, yeah. but I, when I got invited for, uh, Bacardi Legacy, mm -hmm. that was probably the, the biggest competition I could ever done. 
Yeah. But I, um, I don't know. I decide not to. Mm. Don't even ask me why, but I, I think at that point in my life, I was, I was coming back from a big downside of my career and I didn't feel ready to it. Probably, I don't know. I don't regret it, but now that I think about it, maybe the, the, that could be the jump that I needed for my career in order mm. to get back at, you know, <laughs> being on top. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Hollywood. <laughs> yep. You're in Hollywood right now. You see the lights and the stars. You see all the stars? They're lined up <laughs> behind these cameras. There's a whole fucking line of celebrities behind these cameras watching our live show right now. <laughs> Sweet, nice. So you're back like on that. top, baby. I you am are back, back on, on top. top. I, like, I like that, yes. <laughs> we all know you were on top about six months ago as well, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yep. Uh, okay, so where does, where does, uh, do you want to, you want to fill your beer up a little bit more? There's, there's more oh, Bitburger yeah, over there. I'll go get it. Yeah, go grab that. Go get comfy. <laughs> I think it's this. I think it's the one closest to you right here. Yeah, it's like the one that's halfway halfway gone. That other one's been open and sitting inside my fridge for like two and a half weeks now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's from uh, December twenty third when I had a couple people over. Didn't I invite you over for that? Um, yes, you did actually. But yeah. I had a couple of problems in my apartment. Oh yeah, that's God right. Damn. Yeah, yeah. Been hearing that excuse for years, but <laughs> <laughs> it actually took me two weeks to get all my shit together. Bro. I know that shit was crazy. You moved Dude. the plumber, all that shit. <laughs> I um, ended up doing it myself, actually. Plumbing? Yes. <laughs> what? Yeah. These fucking people are like, you call them and they're like, yeah, I'm coming, and then uh, the day that they're supposed to come, you actually. I take a day off because I was waiting for these people to come. Yeah. They never show up. Mm -hmm. They keep telling me on tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. I'll let you know what. Classic. And uh, I ended up doing it myself. It took me a day and a half. That shit is not easy. God (laughs) damn. What, did you watch YouTube tutorials or something? Um, Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) YouTube had a lot to do, but... um, That's fine. It's uh, it's so funny uh, because during the pandemic, I, I went to Arizona. Yeah. Uh, rent is cheap. Rent everything is so cheap. Everything is so cheap in Arizona. And um, I, Yo, I, I didn't, I didn't even know that you were there. Yeah, I was there like the whole pandemic. Damn. <laughs> um. So uh, I rent this house uh, for a hundred dollars, a fucking hundred dollars with a with a pool in the backyard. <laughs> and you have a bunch of uh, places to go. You know, it's not like. <laughs> Because uh, back then I was living with um, with my ex uh, ex roommate, and um, and she went a little bit crazy. Like she got into that uh, craziness about like you know the coronavirus shit. Oh, okay, yeah. So she was doing a lot of shopping, and her apartment was tiny. She was cleaning all the shit, like disinfecting everything, disinfecting and potato chip bags. Z- I, yes, <sighs> like she got to that point, like she was. Which is great, you know, like yeah. you, you want to take care of yourself, you want to be safe. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But our apartment was tiny and I didn't want it to see that, to be honest. Yeah. And I and I thought like I'm not going to survive being uh, locked down with her. Yeah. So I I decided to just go to fucking Arizona. <laughs> That's amazing. Dude, I went there. I yeah. had the time of my life. And I have, um, and I had this uh, old lady Sick. as a as a neighborhood old lady who uh who was paying me to change uh, light bulbs. Hundred dollars <laughs> to change the light bulb. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. So uh, at, uh, at one point um she got me fixing her fucking uh, the the water faucet of her kitchen sink. Yeah. I don't know how to do that, but I want that money. <laughs> That's fucking sick. So I, I start watching some videos. <laughs> I took some pictures on, to see if it's similar or not. And all that shit is universal, bro. Yeah. So you yeah, just yeah. go to the fucking hardware store, buy what you need, and yeah. put it back. It's like yeah. playing with Legos. Yeah, yeah, I know. You really just need like plumbing with like some crazy like 
uh, like, uh, what, what do you call it? Fucking uh, drain is like really fucked. Yeah, like when you something actually something crazy. Yeah, when you have to use the the fire, the flame. I don't know how to call. Yeah, the weld. And then start melting the tubes and all that yeah, shit. Yeah, That's yeah. more like professional stuff. Yeah, hundred percent. That's hilarious. So fucking plumber yeah. in a day. Yeah. <laughs> Day and a half. <laughs> Plumber in a day and a half. That, just, that should just be a whole fucking YouTube channel. That'd be fire. I bet you that shit would go viral too. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it, videos are there, like for sure. Yeah. There's videos for everything on YouTube. Everything that's how, that's, how YouTube. I, that's how I learned how to do a lot of like photo editing and all kinds of shit. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. really good for that stuff. But anyways, dude, where does your career go like from here? What's uh, like, what are you trying to do? Like, you know. I don't know, further down the road where, or, or really soon or like, what the fuck are you trying to do? Like, um, um, I, uh, most, like more cocktail programs Are you yes, trying to open a restaurant likely. or like, is there anything on the, on the table that you're thinking about or? Yeah, I have a, I'm actually have a next project. Um, <laughs> um, where I was talking with my mentor, Miguel Aranda, we're still working together in somehow. Um, we were talking about opening a, a taco shop. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to do a, like a small taco joint and uh, bring some flavors from, he's also from Mexico City. So we, he, we have the same vision of what a taco looks like, you know, yeah. in the city, it's just totally different. Like uh, to me, it's crazy when I go to restaurants, like fancy Mexican restaurants, and then they give me a fucking fork and a knife to, with a taco. And then I'm like, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> They're the worst. I never go to fancy <laughs> taco places. Yes, ever. Don't, don't ever. Please don't uh, do that. If, if there's not I, like I a refuse. grandma like cooking my shit, <laughs> I don't even go there. Like I'm dead ass serious. I refuse to pay $10 for the taco, bro. Hell, Hell no. fucking no. $5 is excessive. <laughs> $5 is excessive. But I will pay $5 at Los Tacos Numero Uno. In oh, oh, yes. You're not wrong about that. I, I went there twice this week. Oof. Fucking Amazing. fire. Amazing. One of um, one of my favorite taco places besides uh, Tacos Numero Uno in the Chelsea market, Yeah, that will be the one in Brooklyn. It's called Taqueria Ramirez. Wow. That's uh, Mexico, it's, um, Mexico City style tacos. Oh, shit. They're pretty good. They're pretty good. Totally recommend it. Damn, I'm gonna need to get the information from that one. Oh uh, yeah, I mean they're very famous. Taquero Ramirez, 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 Ramirez. Yeah, Ramirez. Ramirez. yeah. they're uh, uh, where? Where in uh, Brooklyn? It's a uh, Greenpoint. Oh god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right in the middle of fucking gentrif gentrification world. <laughs> gentrification world. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, you, you're not good, wrong about good. it. Good, good. No, that's good. That's good. Yeah, man. Staying strong over there. I love it. But is yes. it owned, white, owned by a white guy? <laughs> <laughs> Which one is it? Is it owned by a Mexican family? Is it owned by a fucking Spanish settler? No, I don't know. To, it's to this, Oaxaca or this something guy, like no, that? No, no, no. This guy is also from Mexico City. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, like the thing is like you have to either go to the Mexico City or being from Mexico City to actually understand the, the culture of uh, the street tacos. Oh my God, hell yeah. Fuck, you have no idea. Like um, yeah. when people tell me, oh, I'll go to Mexico City next week. I'm like, yeah, but don't go to fucking like Puyol. Like, don't, I know there are like number one or number two, number five, whatever you call it, like top restaurants in the world. Yeah, I mean, I mean go. But like if you there, go to fucking the street market and have food there. Then you're going to get to try. You're going to have the taste of the city. That's like the only shit that I ate when That's I was in Mexico City. That's the legit shit. That's the legit shit. Those tacos with a lot of grease and like, uh, like the, you might, they might going to send you to the bathroom for like a good two hours. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. But it's yeah. worth it. <laughs> it's totally worth it. It's that fucking good. I was definitely shitting myself for a while. Oh yeah. 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 Especially a after a couple beers. Oh my God. <laughs> Oof. Forget about it. They're fucking crazy good. I'm not. They are crazy, crazy, crazy good. They're yeah. great, yes. Yeah. So speaking of, you're from Mexico City. Mm -hmm. Like, what's it like coming from Mexico City and going through all this shit in New York and coming up the ranks as a bartender? And what's it like now also being, uh, like, an immigrant or a person of color, right? Or, like, you know, a foreigner. Yeah. Um, in no white in Mexico. Well, because it's crazy. Because, I mean, it's crazy because you you work at nice fucking places. Yeah, like you work at nice ass places. What's that like? 
I mean, do you notice any difference? I mean, I mean, you have a personality too, where I could see you being like, no, it's not any different. It's me. So it's, you know, I let, because I know you're kind of like me where like, you kind of like, don't let people like you're, you're really good at protecting your energy. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I could see you saying that, but what, what, how do you feel like, have you gone through a lot of, have you gone through any shit? Like any kind yes, of racist shit of or like any kind of like, yeah, like, yeah, what's, definitely. Um, I had a couple of like bitter experience. Like, I've been bartending for over 10 years, and I have probably two or three experiences that I remember. Yeah. Meaning that they actually got me somehow. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, I want to smash a glass in the face of this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I never let it take over, you know? Like, I'm, right. um, just let it go. Um, I walk away from the bar if I have to. I walk away from the person. I just ignore the person 100%. Right. Um, so yeah, like uh, most likely. Can you talk about one of those experiences? Like, uh, well, yeah, it's um, let's say the first one. The first one, it's uh, it was uh, two old guys, probably like fifties, and a younger woman, forty, forties, I would say. Um, it was a uh, it was a private event, private party. It was actually the birthday of one of my friends. So I went there. I went there. Um, she invited mad people. Like, she she knows a lot of people also. Um, I wanted to believe in that party. Like, most of the people that were there, they were uh, friends or family from hers. Yeah. So this is uh, my friend's bar. So she hosts her party. Uh, back then, they were dating. So uh, I go there as a, as a guest. So I go there. I went there with a couple people. Sinclair was there included. <laughs> nice. So I went with her, <laughs> a couple more friends. Yeah. Once we go there, uh, there is, uh, the party is huge. It's a lot of people. Uh, my friend is like, please help me out behind the bar. Like, I need you. Oh, my God. And I'm like, I was going to say, I'm like, hold on, are you going to tell a story where you weren't bartending? <laughs> okay, so you get pulled behind the bar. Exactly. And then I'm like, um. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm having a good time with my friends, you know? Like, I went there just to say hi and obviously, like, uh, have a good time with the with, with his girlfriend, which is uh, her birthday party. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, uh, sure, I guess. <laughs> but okay. let, let, me, let me enjoy myself first, you know? Let me have a drink. Let me sit down with my friends and let me, like, set them up so I can jump behind the bar then. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, okay, do that, do that. So we, we have a table, we sit down, and these two guys staring at us. Not only me, but us. So I'm talking, <laughs> I'm talking, okay, I'm talking. It's a Korean girl, beautiful girl, Sinclair. Yeah. It's a Mexican guy, uh, this girl from Jamaica, and uh, this guy was, where he's he from? Uh, he's from America, I don't remember where. Anyway, so yeah, yeah. so it's a diversity. It's like <laughs> yeah, yeah, New yeah. York, New yeah. York shit. You yeah, know? yeah, of course. <laughs> and this guy is staring at us. <laughs> he's not staring at the guy. Like the 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 American guy. Like he's fine. Yeah. He's just staring at us. <laughs> and my my friend, the Jamaican girl, she goes like, "Fuck you! Like, what are you looking at?" Yeah, yeah. And and the other guy, he turns around. He saw uh, he saw us. He keep on staring at. And then the woman also turns around. And they're laughing at us. I mean, we are like, what the heck? Like, sure, whatever. Okay. We, did, we didn't let that uh, bother us much. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, I set up the table. We had our drinks and everything. And then I'm like, okay, I'll go to help you now. So I put on a suit jacket that I had downstairs. I go upstairs again. And then I, I jump behind the bar. <laughs> And uh, I'm, I'm helping. I'm helping. I'm helping. The party's huge. There's a lot of people. There's only two bartenders. My yeah. friend, who is uh, supposed to hosting the party, he's working his ass off. And he he wanted to be in the floor. Yeah, yeah. Which I totally get that. Plus, he's my boy. So I'll take care of him. Yeah. yeah. So I jump behind the bar. And this group of people comes at me, like, straight up. And, um, and they order a drink. I don't remember what I said or um, what I did. And then uh, I'm talking with the girl, asking, like, what, what she wants. And then she goes, like, what? 
I'm like, yeah, what is that you want? And she start acting like she doesn't understand. Like, yeah, I have a strong accent, but like I'm being clear. Oh and she's like, what? God. And she's laughing. She's laughing at it. So that's when I'm lost it. <laughs> I lost it there. I'm like, Yo. are you deaf or you're playing stupid? And then the guy jumps and he's like, what are you even doing here at the bar? You're not supposed to be here. I'm like, okay, so what the fuck is your problem? So I go get my boy, I go get her. And I'm like, I, I, I don't want to see them. I, I know this is your party. I know this is your people. Yeah, yeah. But I don't want to fucking see them. If, if I keep talking to them, this is not going to be cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, oh yeah, like God. eventually, like she called them down. Um, yeah, it, was, it wasn't, it, that's, uh, this is like probably seven years ago. And Jesus yeah, Christ. like uh, still there. Like I'm still remember that shit. God, so you go through that uh, that kind of situation <sighs> when they just like judge you for how you look like, of your skin color, or your accent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In That's my case, a- like I have a fucking strong Latin accent, and like I mean, you can tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy though that she's like she was like fucking playing your ass. Yeah. Yeah, so she was literally playing you. Big time. That's fucked up. That's that's some shit. And the most fucked up part is that, <laughs> that you you can tell, you know? Like you, I, I saw that. I saw that and then I get angry. I'm like, are you deaf or you're just playing stupid? Like what is it? And she understood that. Yeah. And and the guy jumps and he is trying to be like the man. But like Deanna is like, fuck you guys. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. Yeah, that's Bitter up. experiences, man. It's crazy. I'm glad we had to really live that for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like therapy in here. <laughs> so, since we spoke last, how are you dealing with the racist white bitch that you know, <laughs> mocked your accent in the way that you spoke? Oh, how God. Come, how have you come along since last week? Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. on the main camera i think it is um right here. people are gonna call it racist okay maybe it is no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's from like the 1920s it's okay it's a sock monkey what are you gonna do what you gonna do i fucking grew up with them but i'm not racist so it's okay but i like making making racist jokes because if oh, you can't yeah, make racist funny. jokes you are not fucking you, you, if you can't a, make them you are racist you're racist yes, <laughs> yes. i'm agree with you I totally agree with you. <laughs> oh, shit. It's fucking hilarious, man. It is. Man. So, wait, Kyle, I have a question for you. Oh, you have a question since, for me? Okay, okay. Since you're the one who's been making all the questions, I have a question for you. Cool. How does it feel working at the bar and getting all the girls? <laughs> how does it feel? that? Like, how can you handle that? Dude. Yeah. It's worse when I get all the boys. I wouldn't say that. I, in my experience, when you get the boys, getting the when you get all the attention from the gay guys get at the, the money, bar, get you the get that paper, you brother. You get that paper, baby. You get it big time. You get that paper. You, all, all you have to do is just a smile, give a drink, and be nice. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I mean, I flirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you do. I'll make mother, motherfuckers believe that I'm going to be... Giving them a call or some shit. So Le- wait, leaving wait. me their numbers and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Hell yeah. But like uh, with girls, I, I I believe girls are way more complicated than guys. <laughs> yeah, they are. I mean, it's uh, like natural, like they're complicated anyways. Yeah, yeah. But like, I, how how does it feel though? Like, mm. like I got I have a game. I know that. I you do I, have I, game. I, I had you my got my mad game. my ups and downs. But for you, it's just like. Here I am. <laughs> but people are also, I mean, like, you got game, but people are attracted to you in general. But, like, you also got that swag, though. Like, just as a person. You know what I mean? Like, you got that fucking energy that, like, yeah, yeah, just yeah, attracts I people. That. You know what but I mean? But it also, like, I have to put some effort in order. Like, let's yeah. say if I want to talk to someone or, like, oh, this girl is pretty, so I have to put some effort. <laughs> I don't think you have to put anything. It's just, like, comes at you like like that. <laughs> Why did you say uh, this? Because I saw it. Like... <laughs> Like here, I'm available. Yeah, need- like I have nothing to do, and Kyle is making three cocktails, and on top of that, like two girls are making a line behind the other girls because they're waiting <laughs> for you to make the goddamn cocktail. And I'm, I'm like here, like hey, you, you want me to make it? No, 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 we we, we wait for a guy. <laughs> I, I mean, I saw it. I've that's been there. I've been there, I've dude. Been there. It's not. Wow, like, that's yeah. crazy. Do you have any like funny, um, like specific occurrences that you can think of with me behind, like behind the bar, like one that always rings in your head or something like that, where you're um, like, I remember this one time, this person was doing this or whatever. Because I feel like, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't. I'm. Mean, I'm. You can think on that, but like when you while you think on that, I'll. I'll keep talking about this, this situation and what you asked me. So, dude, I don't know. It's kind of funny because, like, everybody thinks that's the case. Like, I think it does happen for sure. But, like, I'm a type of person that just doesn't give a fuck about that kind of shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And when it does happen a lot, like, like people think it's really, like, and people are going to say so much shit about me when I say this shit, but, like, people think it's, like, mad it's great and it's so easy being like a person that gets a lot of attention but it's also kind of shitty because you're just like you get so much unwanted attention Mm -hmm. you know how many fucking girls that like i am not even close to as interested in and they're just like trying to throw game at you and like you're just like yep like okay no yeah like like, 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 let's just be humans like if we make eye contact and you get the feeling from me that like i'm attracted to you yeah then make some effort and then like then let's see what happens but it's like you just are throwing like haymakers out of nowhere and it's like you mentioned something very important because uh a friend of mine uh, she's a woman uh she's a beautiful woman uh, she was complaining the other day. We had a conversation and she was like, um, uh, the other day, finally, I went to a bar to see my friend. I got to sit at the bar and no one was bothering me at all. Oh, yeah. Finally. I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, I, I get where you're coming from. Yeah. But on the other hand, you have to realize that you're hot as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a beautiful eyes. You have a great body. Yeah. And if I see you sitting down at the bar by yourself, <laughs> of course I'm gonna I'm gonna try to talk to you. I'm gonna <laughs> send you a drink. I'm gonna say like, yeah, I get it. Some as you said, like you don't want that much attention sometimes, mm-hmm. and it, it might be hard. Yeah. But uh, on the other hand, like, how do you navigate that? You know, how do you handle that? <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it, uh, to me, it's very interesting. Yeah. Because uh, as I said, like, I, I, I have to uh, have a game. I have to, like, <laughs> like, put something here and there in order to make the person, yeah. you know, have some. So, uh, That's way for, fucking more interesting, though. You know what I mean? Like, because everyone's just like, is. oh, my God, I'm so physically attracted <laughs> to them. And that's like, there's nothing else to but it. Like, You're like, mm-hmm. like for, okay, for me, working with you, I, I saw, I, I saw, man, I saw girls be like, <laughs> oh, he look at me. Like, bitch, of course, you know, of course he look at you. It's, uh, he has to make eye contact in order to take your order. You know what they say? Within 10 feet, make eye contact. <laughs> Within five feet, say hello. <laughs> You just made that up. No. No? Oh, shit. That's, that's like good. the standard. That's, that's like that's good. from like the standards, the standard uh, hotels, like rule book on customer service. That's like the thing. Within ten- <laughs> nice. Nice. Within 10 feet, make eye contact or smile. 
within five, five feet, feet say, say hello. hello. <laughs> okay, I like that. I'm gonna start using that. <laughs> No, oh, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised about that. I'm, uh, I'm actually yeah. curious. If, mm. if I mean, sometimes it can be really fucking difficult, like, because there's also people that, like, literally get enamored with you. Mm hmm. Like, stalker shit, but also, like. Oh, shit. Have you ever been in that situation? I haven't had, like, a stalker, but I've had people that, like, yeah, are, like, constantly trying to hang out with me. It's like. Mm. <sighs> It's like, dude, it gets annoying. Just be a fucking normal person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Read the yeah. vibes here. Yeah. Like, I'm not responding to you or like whatever the fuck it might be. I mean, everybody has those in, in some cases, but like behind the bar, though, like people will take a liking to you like really, really fast mm -hmm. and then like think that you're they're your best friend or like want to be your best yes, friend like yes. right away. And then like. Because they're like enamored, so right. because they're enamored with you, yeah. they'll be like, "Yeah, it's 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 just weird." Like I'm really good at like not letting people get further than they should. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Definitely. And I've been in the exact the same situation too. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. It happens to me before, not like stalking me or anything like that. But uh, just for the simple fact that you're taking care of them and then you have to be cool and you have <laughs> to be nice because they're your customers, mm -hmm. they automatically think that you became best friends. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of annoying because... Like, especially when you're good at bartending too. That too. They love that like... There's, there's those people that like will become enamored with you also for just normal reasons, but then they, like they see you like... The way you fucking make your cocktails, yeah, the yeah. way you shake, the way you're fucking pouring two drinks at once. And they're like, oh, my fucking God. Yeah. Like, it's so hot. Like, it's so yeah. cool. Like, yeah. you're, you're the best fucking bartender I've ever seen. Like, da -da -da -da. you know what I mean? Like, that kind of shit, too. And that just adds to the fuel to the fire, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, they... <laughs> it's fun. At one point, um, one point I found it fun because... <laughs> You have to, like, get to learn how to navigate these people, how to, like, read the people, how to deal with them, how to talk to them. Because sometimes when you're busy making four cocktails at once and these people are still, like, so interested. Sh talking to you. Exactly. Talk, talking to you it's, and you're, like, you have four drinks yes, lined up. You're pouring yes, into each yes. one and they're, like, and trying top, to have a conversation exactly. with you. Exactly. And on top of that, they're asking you, what is that? What are you making? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Can I have the same? Blah, blah, blah. I'm, like, what can, you, can you give me one minute? Let me finish this and then I, we can talk. Seriously. <laughs> what is that? A tequila soda, bitch. <laughs> Get the fuck away from me. <laughs> It's a margarita. They think it's people always have that thing about them where they're like they think it's so something so special because they don't like frequent like nice cocktail bars. Yeah. And so they think that anything you're making is like super it's fucking super, cool yeah. Yeah. and like it's, really especially like, if you work at like, special. Uh, like high high end bars, you know, like like top bars in the city. Like yeah. Um, I was actually having this conversation <laughs> recently with um with this girl, and and she was like, oh, I bet in order to work in this bar, you have to be like top bartender and i'm like yes and no yeah kind of yeah, yeah to a degree to a degree yeah, you have to you have to be a good bartender but also you have to like uh have this uh charming personality to keep people around because uh you know this is a members bar uh, the members only bar so like the people that they come here they they come at least once a month yeah so it somehow you you gotta you gotta be nice you know, can 100%. Be, can be a dick to a member. 100%. Even, even though they are a dick to you. Mm -hmm. But um, it's, once again, it's part of the game. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like, I don't know, I think it's I think it's weird. I think, like, people just are just, they just don't really know how to uh, have, like, a genuine interaction. Like, I mean, just going back to, like, you talking about, you know, I don't know, getting attention and shit like that. Like, in all cases of life, I think it's just better to fucking just let things be what the fuck they are. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, I get it. Like, I see a lot of fucking hot women all the time in New York City. I see a lot of hot guys all the time in New York City. I see a lot of hot people that, you know, from all walks of life that don't consider themselves man or woman. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. the fucking beautiful people everywhere of all genders in new york yeah. city like every fucking day yeah 
And like you can just tell, like, just be a fucking normal person. <laughs> like, if there's a connection, wait, ha- there's a connection. You know you, what I'm have saying? You, have you been in this situation where, um, when you see this hot woman, mm-hmm. you're like, wow. Yes. And I'm, oh, okay, <laughs> let me finish. <laughs> let me finish. And, and this woman, it has actually, like, it's more attracted to you than you're on her. Like, even though you really, really like her, you find out that she's more attracted to you mm-hmm. than you're actually more attracted to her. Have you ever been in that situation? Yeah. Yeah. How, 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 how the situation go? Like, I mean, at the end of the day, like, I mean, I'm either just, oh, I'm either I'm just, thinking about it. I mean, like <laughs> <laughs> breathe, breathe. <laughs> At the end of the day, I'm either just not as attracted to her, as physically attracted there to her go. as she is to me, or like, like, it depends. Like, there's a lot of beautiful fucking people that are like, somebody would consider like the hottest person that they've seen in their entire life mm-hmm. in New York City. Yeah. That like, I'm just not even remotely attracted to. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I like, very, like a lot of people. I, I, like, I've seen models that I'm like, sure, like. They're good looking, but just no into them. Yeah, That's yeah. what it is. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually got this, uh, this person, this beautiful woman, that um, she was consistently asking me, like, why are you not into me? Are you gay? Are you? Uh, mm. I'm like, no, I, I, I'm, I'm straight. <laughs> I love women. But, like, you, uh, don't get me wrong. Like, you, you're a model. You're a beautiful looking girl, but I've just, yeah, like we, a, we're not connecting <laughs> exactly and they and they, on top of that she took it like personal first oh. of all and she got mad at me for that come on man that's that's some insecure shit that's some insecure shit right but there. like these kind of people like they get they they're so used to get whatever the fuck they want oh my god at the moment they oh say my god. and when they don't get that from you then uh you you're uh the, you're the worst person ever because mm-hmm. you're not appreciated Mm-hmm. According to them, you're not appreciated. That's just some ego shit, and I do not fuck with that. Yeah, yeah, me neither. I do not me fuck neither. with that. Yeah, at all. Yeah, I kind of had that situation so last night what, with somebody. What, just a little this bit. This is what. This is where I'm going. Oh, this is what I was trying to do with you, because I see, I see, I see what I see. I know, I know what I know. Mm-hmm. I I saw tons of girls <laughs> trying yeah. to get a drink from you, <laughs> yeah. and uh, and um, as I said, like uh, yeah, uh, I also have my game. I I've been in similar situations. And and I'm still like wonder like uh, how how other people do you know like mm-hmm. uh, like also you're the model mm-hmm. yeah you're the model you're the bartender yeah so this uh, these two things that you know that yeah. get you girls a lot mm-hmm. sometimes you you might don't even want them but they're there anyways and this is yeah. something that you have to face every day yeah. It actually can it can be detrimental because like uh, literally yeah, literally like, like job. I, I had a girl say to me literally like three nights ago that like you're a fucking player da, 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 uh-huh. da, and I'm sitting there going she does shit uh, I'm not really a player like yeah I fuck around but like listen I don't like I'm not that crazy dude like I'm not like yeah. constantly fucking people every night of the week I'm not like bouncing around all these different girls like all the fucking time like first of all i don't have fucking time for that to manage (laughs) to manage that literally with my time but also with other people's fucking shit secondly i mean that that was that that was secondly like managing their fucking emotions or like you know like a lot of people want more you know what i mean so they always want more yeah a lot of yeah it's hard to manage like it's just not feasible and it's not real like Sure, and also at the same time, like, shut the fuck up. Just, like, worry about what the fuck we're doing right now. Like, I'm with you right now. Who cares? But they all, but, uh, but a lot of people, but a lot of girls, specifically girls, like, you know, they think oh, that so you're you, big they, with guys, too. They think that you're... <laughs> I mean, if you're trying to be specific... I'm specifically talking about girls. <laughs> Great. Sorry, that sorry I interrupted any you. Men. Um... <laughs> So <laughs> they, uh, yeah, they think that you're just going to fuck them and like kick them to the curb. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because you're attractive. And also they're insecure. And they're insecure. They're insecure. Yeah. yeah. Are, are you insecure? 
No. Not really. No. Not really, no. <laughs> no. Not when no, it comes to that kind. Not, of, no, not when it comes to that kind of shit. No, but not. it's also because I don't really have an ego about it. You know what I mean? Like people are always like, "You know, you're beautiful." That's true. That's true. That's people, true. That's, you know how many times what, people say that shit yeah. to me a week? You know, yeah, you're, yeah, you yeah. know, you're beautiful. Yeah, I I'm like. Do you think I fucking care about like how beautiful I am? At this point, no. At this point, not. I never have. Like, yeah. no, I think no, I've never cared. Yeah, but you, you never realize, like, you never like fix fixing your hair in in a mirror and be like, oh shit, like I, I look good today. I mean, yeah, I, f- I, I feel good. Like, yeah, like I like, uh, yeah. There's times when yeah. I look at myself in the mirror, I'm like, hell yeah, I look fucking dope. Yeah, like because the energy is right, the outfits yeah, yeah, yeah. right. You know, my my hair looks good, my skin looks good, whatever. Like everyone has those moments. You know what I mean? Definitely, yes. But I'm not sitting there going like, you know, ah, e- e- yeah. ego, you don't go e- around. You don't go around being like, yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm yeah. yeah, yeah, or that, e- or. Or ego, or ego tripping about it and being yeah. like, that's a fucking dude. Like you're ugly. Like that's an ugly uh, fucking person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I know I'm so. I think and I know and I consciously think about how beautiful I am compared to other people. Like, nah, nah, no, 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 you're yeah. But that's what people will be saying to me all the fucking time. Oh yeah, I bet that I and bet. same shit with girls. Mm-hmm. Like you're a fucking player. Like you can get any girl you want, and then all of a sudden I'm like, why isn't any girl hitting me up ever? <laughs> Am I, like, that fucking intolerable? Like, there's no possible way. I'm a nice fucking person. Really nice person. Yes, you are. I am agree with you on that one. <laughs> when it comes to girls and shit, too, I'm, like, really fucking nice. I, uh, yeah, you're uh, very even, you know? Like, uh, you don't care much about, like, if you're looking good or not. You just, like, vibe with people. <laughs> this has turned into my therapy session. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, I gotta be fair. I gotta, I gotta be fair. I'm very honest with you. I, uh, in some I, I admire you. In somehow, you know why? Because once again, like um, as you say, uh, girls tells you, "Oh, you're a player." You know how many times I heard that too? Like, yeah, yeah. And and it's that confidence I, is that swag. Yeah. Exactly. Like uh, I, I can see my, uh, I can see myself in somehow reflected on you, but you're like 10 times more. You know what I mean? Okay. Like if I get one or two girls telling me this, I'm a hundred percent sure you're getting 20 girls telling you the same oh, shit. God, constantly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cause uh, uh, as a guy, and as a straight, as a straight guy, I can tell like, yeah, you're a good looking motherfucker. And on top of yeah. that, you're the model, you, you work on your body and you work behind the bar. So you have like, you have, you have like the four keys of heaven, you know? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I believe, I believe uh, girls come at you and telling you the, all this type of shit. Uh, and I also like, I was so curious about you, like how, uh, how you handle all this, because sometimes it, it sounds pretty nice. It sounds dope. It sounds awesome. But the process is totally different. Mm. When, when you get to live with who you are, you have like, you have probably you have, more choices, but I'll put it this way. You have two options. You either own it or you just vibe with it. Or, or, or you can just be a dick about it. I'm being like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm way better looking than you, so don't talk to me. Or like, you know, like you have right. that options. You, we are blessed because the people that we are, like we don't choose to be whoever the fuck we are. Mm. But also on the other hand, like if you, if you look around and being like, oh shit, like, like, for example, like me, I'm a boy. We always play these games. Like we are in the subway, and then he's like, "You think he's getting bitches?" <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm going, right? Like, of course the guy is not getting any bitches, bro. But like, <laughs> we are blessed, and we have to like own it in somehow. Don't be a dick about it, yeah. but own it, yeah. right? Yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah. Like make it better, not only for yourself, but for the people that it's around you. Yeah. Um. I'm, I'm seriously, I'm uh, uh, very curious about yeah. like your your daily life, especially mm. working behind the bar because I've seen it. I, I've mm. seen girls being like, "Oh yeah, he was looking at me." Mm, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> That's funny. But, as uh, but uh, yeah, oh, I, I wanted to like share this with you because yeah. I actually wanted to talk to you about this, and this is the perfect moment, mm-hmm. I guess. And um, uh, yeah, like I, I actually, I, I, I fucking admire you, dude. I, mm-hmm. you're a great person. Uh, like, you don't let this uh, physical thing get over your head. Mm, yeah. And you're very even with uh, whoever you're hanging out with. You always like cool with everyone. You're like have a great energy. Uh, you're good at what you do. Uh, 
your curious, I, I wouldn't say passion because yeah. I don't really know. I don't really know. I'm, yeah. I'm, I don't know you that deep. Yeah. But uh, you're doing your own own thing in your very own way, and um, and it's good. Yeah. Uh, when you cut your hair and and then I I saw you, I'm like, <laughs> why not? I mean. Kyle, Kyle knows where to go, what he's want to do. Just let him be Kyle. Yeah, like, yeah. Whatever Kyle says is good. <laughs> yeah, do it. Go. Own it. Own it. Gotta go. Yeah. Right? I don't know if you remember <clears throat> when when I told you this. What? It was um when we went to Dom for the opening night. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, like, yes, like, of dude, course. I remember like, that. I remember yeah, that. Like, <laughs> yeah. You're good. Do yeah. it. Do it. Just own it. Like, you have so <laughs> yeah. much confidence on yourself yeah. that I also admire that. Admire that from you. Yeah. Like the confidence you have, uh, the person that you are, the energy that you that you have, and not not only that you have it. It's like <clears throat> you show it to people. Like you're not afraid to show who Kyle is. Mm. Like you, yeah, you're a very strong personality. Yeah. And very confident. Thanks, man. No. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I feel the same way about you too, dude. Yeah. That's I, I really do. I think that's why we connect really well. And I think that's why you're fucking here today. That's why we got brought back together behind the bar. Like, you know what I mean? Or, you know, reconnected and happened to be behind the bar at that, at that time. So yeah. True that. Like, uh, I miss those. Can only keep going up from here. <laughs> I miss those times actually working with you. Yeah. Yeah. Play, well, playing those stupid games. <laughs> Left or right, <laughs> you can't say no. <laughs> can't say oh, no. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs>